fall, our life is but a dream. Fantastic pose and greed, then we should feed our jewelry to the. I'm using my phone to record this because I don't feel like clearing the space off my SIM card and I can't afford a new one. I'm gonna, because you know, everyone asked for my opinion about this book, Milk and Honey by Rupi. Or, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. And you know, everyone wants to know my opinion. It's not like this is my first video or anything where that anyone's not, is gonna know that I'm posting. Except my mom. I tell my mom everything. My friend allowed me to borrow this book. And it's been on my list of books I wanted to read for the longest time. And when I first started reading it, especially the first chapter, which is The Hurting, I didn't realize how intense this book is. Her, the, her, the author's, um, the, you could hear her raw emotion. Um, on page 22, I'll read the stanza. Sex takes the consent of two. If one person is lying, they are not doing anything because they are not ready or not in the mood or simply don't want to. Yet the other is having sex with their body. It's not love. It is rape. And you could, you could feel the pain she went through, I'm assuming this is about her personal experience, um, and I f what I'm, the impression I'm getting from this is, since she feels that she has to say that it's not love, people have told her that you just wanted to do it or, um, you asked for it. Of course, I could be interpreting it incorrectly. I'm just doing it based off my interpretation. I just finished the book today. Rape is a very touchy subject. Many women and men go, th go through PTSD from it and aren't taken seriously. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> the next page, 23, the stanza reads, The idea that we are so capable of love, but still choose to be toxic. I think this is a perfect description of what people do these days. No, humanity does. People, we could literally choose to not hurt people we could choose not to bully someone not to freaking kill a whole race or something you know but mm -hmm. but yep people still do it and with how does that benefit anyone i don't see how it benefits someone to put down each other for for being a girl or a boy, being black or white, how you look, whether you're fat or skinny, whether you're athletic or not. You could disagree with people's choices, decisions, like um, whether they decided to quit school or not, but that doesn't mean you have to you mean I'm sorry I'm jumbling this around it's doing this quietly so my sister won't hear me you, you you 
alone can choose what to do. It's, you can't blame it like, oh, it's just me. That's a very harmful thing you could say, say to yourself. Like, um, I can't change it. It's who I am. That's very harmful. I can't express this enough. It's so harmful for for yourself, not not even for anyone, not not only for everyone around you, but for yourself. Um, if you keep that mentality, you won't change. And some people say you don't have to change. Change is not always a bad thing. You could change for the better. Saying, "Oh, it's just the way I am." will slow down your improvement um, and self-improvement is very important as we are all imperfect the stanza on page 29 reads trying to convince myself I am allowed to take up space it's like writing with my left hand when I was born to use my right. Um, I'm 14 minutes is deep. I'm not making fun of her. I'm making fun of myself. Um, I feel like I could personally relate to this. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I just feel so disgusted of, about my existence. Like, like I'm legitimately grossed out. And it's hard, it's hard, it's hard to convince myself that I am worthy of being alive. Yeah. Page 33. Emptying out of my mother's belly was my first act of disappearance. Learning to shrink for a family who likes their daughter invisible, the daughter's invisible was the second. The art of being empty is simple. Believe them when they say you are nothing. Repeat it to yourself like a wish. I am nothing. I am nothing. I am nothing. So often, the only reason you know you're still alive is from the heaving of your chest. I can't imagine living with a family who can, who would put their sister, brother, your daughter, son, that they're nothing. They have a life and they have passions, they have opinions and you say they're nothing? I couldn't, I could never, I, I legitimately can't imagine what it would be like to live there in that kind of family. I would be very appreciative that I don't live with that kind of family. I love my mom and my sisters. Page 45. When my mother was pregnant with her second child, I was four. I pointed at her swollen belly, confused at how my mother had gotten so big in such a little time. My father scooped me in his tree trunk arms and said the closest thing to God on this earth is a woman's body. It's where life comes from, and to have a grown man tell me something so powerful at such a young age changed me to see the entire universe rested at my mother's feet. I feel like this um, poem is a good reminder about how how much our how let me try to figure out how I want to formulate my words. <laughs> um, ew, my makeup is gross. Um, our mother is one of the most important things in our life. Without a mother, you wouldn't be here. And I like the part where she said the entire universe rested at her mother's feet. 
It shows how it, it, it gives a sense of how mothers are strong. They have to support a, a, cre a living being in their stomach all on their own. 46, page 46. I struggle so deeply to understand how someone can pour their entire soul, blood and energy into someone without wanting anything in return. Um, and she, I, I'm assuming this is a title of a poem. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. <laughs> is, I will have to wait till I'm a mother. And you know what? I completely agree with that. Because, this is getting off track, this has nothing to do with the book now. Um, when I got my puppy, Cairo, such a good boy. Um, people are, people are like, dogs are just, are like babies. Dogs are way easier. <laughs> Bro, dogs are so much easier than a freaking kid. Don't say, bro, don't say you know how to freaking take care of kids if you only had a dog. I love my dog. I freaking love him, trust me. It's just not the same as having a human child. Thank you. That's the T, as these kiddos say. I really liked um, the last two lines on page 47. It's like, when she tells me to marry the type of man I want to raise my son to be like. I think that that's a great way of looking at things. Like, when you're looking for a partner... There, you know, there are ups and downs, there are disagreements, but you want a person that you're compatible with. It's like, you might say, we agree on everything, but what happens, this is all jumbled and mumbled and really bad, I'm sorry. What happens when you then disagree? How is he or she going to react with a disagreement you have to you have to pay attention to that you have to you have to look at that because some people are fine with disagreeing they could um, make compromises or just simply agree to disagree but others um may force you to do the the stuff they want you to do bye